welcome back to the channel. This video is my biggest mistakes and regrets when it comes to owning guinea pigs so you don't have to fall for the same things that I did. Now I say this a lot, even though things are changing and improving, there's still so much potential for these mistakes to keep happening. Mainly because what we understand as professional advice is lagging way, way behind today's care standards. So as well as sharing what went wrong, I want to give you some tips along the way for how you can avoid making these mistakes yourself. Warning, it is going to be a bit of a story time one, but we've still got lots of footage of the piggies to enjoy, so you don't have to look at this old face for too long. I've owned guinea pigs pretty much continuously since school, right through university, when I rented afterwards, and eventually when I got my own place. But rewinding time, when I first started out, I bought home two gorgeous baby guinea pigs after doing what I thought was a reasonable amount of research. I had friends that kept them, I spoke to people who owned them in the past, and I took advice from that fateful pet shop. More on that one later. Unfortunately though, the tradition of keeping guinea pigs outside in a hutch was the norm back then and I ended up with a small hutch which for some reason we chose to keep in the garage, thinking they would be warmer and happier in there maybe. And when I think back to that small cramped hutch in that dark garage which only had one tiny window, it kind of makes me feel sad and embarrassed. But I did realise the situation wasn't ideal. Those poor piggies had no light it was awkward to go and see them and I realised that I wasn't getting the enjoyment out of them that I'd hoped for. So luckily for them it was just a few short months until I got an indoor cage and the guinea pigs moved in properly. I'm not saying that keeping piggies outside is a definite no-no, it can work for some people but those pigs had no natural light and on top of that that hutch was way too small. So if you're gonna keep piggies outside you need a large hutch with a predator proof run and you need Need to ensure they are warm enough in winter and cool enough in summer. There's often a lot more to consider when they're outside, which is why I always recommend new owners bring them into the home. My second mistake unfortunately came right after I fixed my first one. You know, I mentioned that I got an indoor cage. Well, the cage was big by standards those days, but still too small in reality. Especially when my teeny tiny cute baby guinea pigs grew up and became two great big energetic bars. That's another more on that later. I think I could probably see the cage wasn't ideal. I remember the piggies spent so much time outside of it, and at least I chose a cage that was easy to clean with one of those kind of clear plastic removable tops on it. I just used to take that off and the piggies would jump out of the cage all by themselves and run up and down the length of the room. And that cage wasn't cheap. It still set us back by about 70 pounds or 88 US dollars. And today things haven't changed. You still pay over 100 pounds easily for a cage that falls far short of the minimum space requirements. For me, at least the piggies got lots of free roam time but that's not always a given either. If you live in a small place or there's other pets or small children, it might not be so easy. And when we choose to give our piggies free roam time, it might not always correspond with their energy levels and if they feel like exploring, running up and down and getting some exercise. So that's why we need to give them a large enough level space which they can make the most of whenever they like. The problem with traditional cage manufacturers just isn't going to go away. So I recommend looking at DIY options and not being daunted by them. CNC cages are probably the best place to start. If you build them one yourself, which isn't hard, they are cheap, they can be modified, added to, mounted on a stand, they're really adaptable and easy to use. So please don't fall for being pressured into buying a small expensive pet store cage. Mistake number three, and it's time to talk about that fateful pet shop and why I had two energetic bars. So whilst I don't regret this one, buying guinea pigs from a pet shop isn't something I would recommend anymore. For me, back in the day, I thought I'd done my research, but I wasn't aware that I should try and look into where to get my guinea pigs from. We just literally called around places until someone said, yep, we got some, and then we went and picked them up. So for my first piggies, I wanted females. 
and I bought females, or so I thought. What actually happened was, well, firstly, I noticed them itching a lot, and then to my oh. horror, I discovered these little tiny white wriggly things in their hair. These turned out to be running lice, which are a guinea pig specific parasite, which bite our piggies and cause itching and skin problems. So off to the vet we went less than two weeks in, and then to top it off, whilst we were at the vet and he was inspecting them, he kindly let us know and showed us that my little girls were actually little boys. So I had males instead of females, and we were hit by a costly vet bill straight out of the gate. Today is remarkably common for guinea pigs to be missexed and for females to be pregnant when bought from a pet shop. Just the other month actually, I had a colleague who'd bought two guinea pigs for his little girl, and next time I spoke to them, he said one of them had given birth. Thankfully, all three of them were females, so he could keep them together, but it doesn't always work out that way. As well as that, it's common for pet shop piggies to have health issues, parasites like we had, fungal skin infections, but also more sinister things such as respiratory infections and viruses. This is usually not through being at the pet shop, but because the guinea pigs come from mass breeders and pet shops don't regulate where they get their stock from. Ultimately, their priority is selling guinea pigs and other small pets for a profit, and we've got to remember that. Fast forward a few years and my next mistake was trying to own guinea pigs at university. So I got my second pair of piggies. This was Pixie and Sprite for any long-term subscribers that might remember them. This was in the summer after the first year of university and I sort of assumed everything would be okay. I don't know why. <laughs> Me and some flatmates rented a student house and I remember speaking with the landlord about keeping them in my room. But his reply was a great big fat no. I could have them outside and that was that. So I was gutted and I had to dig out the old hutch out of its hiding place in my mum and dad's garage. And to make things worse, we had such a cold and snowy winter that year. I was so worried about the guinea pigs and I ended up bringing them inside anyway in an even smaller cage, one that I could afford. And of course, even though it was only for a few days, it had to coincide with the landlord visiting the house whilst I was out at uni. I remember getting this text saying, get those rodents out, otherwise they're going in the oven. And obviously I was mortified. The moral of the story is to think ahead. If your situation is going to change, how are you still able to provide your guinea pigs with the best care you can? For me, I learned my lesson from that landlord. And for the next two years, I made sure I spoke to the landlords properly and explained the situation with the piggies that they live in a cage, there's no mess or smells, and I would be prepared to pay extra deposit for them if they felt it was needed. So I was able to keep them inside with me for the last two years of university. Mistake number five is one that I regret to this day, and that's trusting the wrong vet. So this was after university and after I adopted Annie and Lola from a local guinea pig rescue to live with Pixie and Sprite. A few months after I got them, I noticed that Pixie had gotten a little cut on her lip, so I thought possibly there'd been a fight without me knowing or some kind of accident. I took Pixie to the vet, uh, but this time I tried a different vet, and it was actually in an effort to find a better vet. On their website it said that they specialised in small animals, but now I know that this means mainly cats and dogs. The vet gave Pixie a type of injected antibiotic that I'd not heard of before, but he said that it can be very effective as it stays in the bloodstream for two weeks. Now I later learned that it was a type of cephalosporin, which is listed on Guinea Lynx's dangerous medications page. Pixie passed away on the Wednesday after she had been injected on the Saturday, with all the signs of something called antibiotic toxicity, which is where an antibiotic causes a bad reaction and kills off too many good bacteria in our guinea pig's digestive system. And because it was injected, there was no way of stopping its effects. It was truly awful, and I wish so much that I knew about exotics vets back then, or I'd taken her to the normal vet instead of going to this other one. 
Pixie was the youngest guinea pig I've ever lost. She was only two years old and it was really difficult to deal with. For me, that was the worst mistake, but I've learned from it and I genuinely hope anyone watching this video will learn as well. Always take your guinea pigs to an exotics vet or a vet who has experience of treating guinea pigs. And if that's not an option, Google what medications you're being prescribed. And if they want to inject anything, don't be afraid to take out your phone, Google it there and then in the vet's practice. It could save something similar happening to your piggies. I'll make sure I pop the link below to the dangerous medications list that I mentioned. And related to this mistake is not understanding the basics of guinea pig healthcare and crucially that it can be a grave error to delay getting them to the vet, especially if they've stopped eating or drinking. So I'll pop some videos in the description below on what to do and how to look after your guinea pigs when they are sick. I've had people comment on these videos saying thank you and that they've helped to save their guinea pigs lives. So please save them to watch at some point. I'm sorry that last one was a bit sad guys but it is an important part of owning guinea pigs and I never want to shy away from that side of things in my videos. I think it's far better to talk openly and honestly about when things are not good and when things are hard as it is all part of owning them. So if you got this far let me know, leave me a little fall leaf clover emoji in the comments below and share your thoughts and any mistakes of your own if you want to and you think it'll help other people. And if you you want to continue to tackle misinformation out there, I highly recommend watching this video next on 10 products guinea pigs don't need and that you shouldn't bother buying. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching as always and we will see you very soon. Bye bye!